Hey everybody and welcome back to Everything Tech and today we're installing Windows Vista in VMware Workstation. Before we get started, you want to make sure you have a copy of Windows Vista and it can be any version of Windows Vista just as long as it's an ISO format or an install disk. Now if you don't have any of those two, I'll show you where you can get a Windows Vista install disk in uh, just a second, but you're also going to need a product key. Well, you don't really need the product key. You are going to need it if you want to activate the, the operating system so you can use it after the trial period expires, but if you don't want to use, you don't want to activate Windows Vista and just want to try it out, you can just install Windows Vista and it, just use it for that trial period. But if you don't have a copy of Windows Vista, you can look online. Here I am on um, Amazon here looking for a copy of Windows Vista, I, although I do have a copy here. You can look on e on Amazon here for uh, Windows Vista. Here we have a v Vista Business Service Pack 1 for $55. And if you think that's a little too expensive for just trying an operating system out, I mean, you can always look on Google. You can Google uh, Windows Vista ISO and download it from any website that you feel comfortable with. But here we have it for $55 and you can purchase it here with a uh, with prime usually when i see something with prime it means that it's all, uh, like backed by amazon so it should be good but you can also look on the same page here where it says that there's new or different versions of it here three different new ones for fifty five dollars and one open box for a staggering ten thousand dollars for some reason but don't go for that you can also look on other sellers like like uh, ebay here but you also have to be careful with what you purchase because here we have one for eight dollars and although these eight dollars seven ninety five may seem like a really good deal you want to make sure you're getting what you pay for sometimes you can find something here but you may purchase something that isn't uh, uh, authentic isn't official or you may not get what you're looking for so you got to be careful with that but if you have any other method of downloading the iso file or purchasing it let's say at a yard sale or a thrift store and you do have a copy of windows vista you can continue with the installation you have to skip all these steps i of course have the iso file that my uncle gave me actually he gave me an install disk from his computer that he threw away a long back a long time ago after it broke and since then he's upgraded to windows 10 on a new laptop but he gave me the install disk which is how i have windows vista anyway here we are in vm workstation and we're going to be installing now so here we are on the home tab but if you on accident erase the home tab like me here to get it back all you have to do is go to the tabs up here where you see file edit view just look for tabs and then click on go to home tab once you do click on go to home tab it opens your home tab and there are three different ways to open a new virtual machine the first one is doing control n that opens the virtual machine wizard clicking on the create a new virtual machine button and going to file new virtual machine all three of those whichever one you're comfortable with you can use as long as you're in the wizard you're cool so we're going to use a typical installation if you're used to custom, that's okay, but we're going to be doing typical, mainly because I'm still new to VMware Workstation and because it's the easiest. So we're going to go ahead and click Next. Here we're going to select where we want or what we want to install. So if you're going to be using an installer disk, you're just going to click on Installer Disk and in put the disk in your drive. But if you're going to be using an ISO file, we're going to click on Installer Disk Image or in yeah, Installer Disk Image File, ISO. And we're going to go ahead and browse. I of course have this on my desktop, so here we are, Windows Vista Home Premium 32-bit, so we're going to click on open, and it says this operating system will use easy install because it detects Windows Vista. What is easy install? Well, basically it skips all of the installation steps for you, like naming your computer and stuff like that, which is just fine. As soon as we launch the virtual machine, it starts the installation process, which saves a lot of time. And that, in my part, is really well, or really good. But I'll show you how you can tweak all the settings to your likings in the computer, or before we start the installation, so you can select how much RAM, how much storage, and stuff like that. So we're going to go ahead and click Next. Here in this next window, we can put in our product key. I'm not going to put in any product key, because I don't like putting it in the program. But next, we're going to select which version we have. I, of course, have Home Premium. And next, we're going to name the computer here, and you can select a password if you want. If you do select a password, you can choose to log in automatically, which requires a password, which is why you need it. Anyway, we're going to go ahead and click Next after we select, we select all of our settings here. We're going to click Next, and it says you did not enter a product key, and that's okay. It's just going to tell you you're going to have to enter it manually in the operating system, which, which is just fine. So we're going to click Yes. And in this next window, we're going to name our computer and select a location where we want to store that virtual machine. So I'm just going to call it Windows Vista for the sake of my own uh, 
organization properties. As you can see here, we have Windows 7, 8.1, and 10. Now, if I was going to use this exclusively for games, I would name it Windows Vista Gaming or Windows Vista Programming, uh, Compiling, and stuff like that. I don't know. Whatever you want to name it, you name it. And for storage, you can store it anywhere you want. I, of course, store it in the uh, native folder, which is in the documents folder, and the folder is virtual machines. I store it there mainly because that's where the computer stores it, and I don't really want to mess with that. But if you want to store this on a, on a hard drive or a portable media, you can, and that's okay. We're going to go ahead and click next, and now we're going to select how much memory we want our computer to have. Of course, 40 gigs is not enough, so we're going to give it 128 gigs, mainly because that, I feel that that's enough for my use. Make sure you put that point zero at the end because I've had several programs that you don't put that there and it thinks it's megabytes. I'm not going to name that program, but... Next, we're going to select if we want to split the virtual disk into multiple files or store the virtual disk as a single file. Now, whichever option you choose, that's okay. I like choosing a single file because it says here that splitting the disk makes it easier to move the virtual machine, which I'm not going to do. And it may reduce performance with very large disks, which is something that I don't want. So, which is why I choose store virtual disk in a single file. But whichever option you choose, that's okay. Whichever option you choose, you're always going to end up in this screen here which allows you to customize a computer and as you can see here it only gives it one gig of RAM which is uh, I think barely enough to run Windows Vista so we're gonna give it at, at least four uh, gigabytes of storage so in order to get into this window here all we're gonna do is customize hardware and right away the first tab is memory so we're gonna go ahead and give it four gigs I'd like to give it eight since I have 16 on my computer but I think that's a little too much for this operating system so we're just gonna give it four and for processors, it's only giving in a single core processor. You could choose up to 16 cores and uh, 16 processors, which would equate to, uh, I think it's 32, uh, 256 actually, 256 processors, which is really, really outrageous. I don't, I don't recommend anybody do that. But I'm going to give it a dual core processor with a single core, uh, dual core processor and just one processor, which would give me uh, two total cores. And you can choose any of these other options here if you're comfortable with them. These are all just the main options that I choose, including these on the side here if you're comfortable with any of those there. You can change them, but in the display settings, which is going to be the final settings we're going to take a look at, here you can choose a graphics memory. My graphics card only supports up to 1 gig, sadly, but if I had a, a 4 gig card, I probably would give it 2 gigs of of uh, video memory or if I had a 12 gig I'd give it 6 gigs if it allows me to but since my graphics card only supports up to 1 gig that's all I'm going to give it and if you want to add or remove any other features or if you accidentally remove a feature to add it back you just go into add it's going to ask you to use or permissions to use your computer and you select yes which is why you saw the screen go black I'm still trying to work out what happens there but here you can select any option that you may have erased or if there's a uh, an option here that isn't available in this menu you can go ahead and add it we're gonna go ahead and add the uh, printer here because I erased it I'm not gonna use any printers on this so it doesn't matter once you're done with all the settings here changing all your settings and tweaking it to your likings we're gonna go ahead and click close and click on finish it should automatically launch launch the operating system it says here binary translation is incompatible and whatnot so just click OK it's not really gonna uh, interfere with your uh, user experience so we're, right now we're gonna go into full screen and if you accidentally click and you see your mouse disappear just ta uh, click on control and alt or or uh, press control and alt that releases the mouse and we're gonna go ahead and go into full screen so we're gonna go into view you can go either go into view full screen and you're gonna see that the blue bar is at the top another way to go full screen is by clicking on this little window here or this little button here and that should go full screen there and you're going to notice that the window is relatively small. And I'll show you how you can fix that in just a second. So you just go into view, auto size, and stretch to guest. And that should stretch it all the way out. Not all the way if you're using a 16.9 display. It's still 4 3 aspect ratio, but at least it's bigger. And I'll show you how you can go into exclusive mode by going into view and exclusive mode. Then you enter exclusive mode. Now remember that you did stretch to fit guests. You may, when we install the drivers later, you're gonna have to remember that and go back to auto fit to guests, so you don't have that over scan like we did in just a second.
And here we are finally in the Windows Vista desktop and as you can see it's starting to install the necessary drivers or VMware tools and VMware tools is just a packaged up uh, variety of different drivers and display adapters and stuff like that so that you can run your virtual machine at full resolution so you can connect your mouse and stuff and it'll work. And I wouldn't recommend doing anything right about now because as soon as it's done installing it's going to restart on its own it doesn't really warn you or anything. But once it's done installing all of this, I'll show you how you can activate and update uh, Windows Vista. And I'll show you how you can change the resolution and the display and stuff like that, so stay tuned for that. Now, if VMware Tools doesn't set up automatically, you may want to just uh, jump out of exclusive mode if you are in exclusive mode. If not, you just want to go up here to your, to your little taskbar and go to VM. And it should be here a little option. There should be an option there that says install VMware tools. You click on that and it should start installing it. And you just jump into your uh, file explorer. And uh, it should have been in your my computer. Here we go, my computer. And it's going to show up here. And it should show up there. And right now it's not showing up there for some reason, but it's still installing VMware tools. And just let that install. It installs all the USB drivers it needs, audio drivers, video drivers, and stuff like that. So just be patient with it, and it should restart automatically. And here we are finally in the Windows Vista desktop, and we're going to go ahead and fix the resolution so you guys can see better. So we're going to go ahead and right click and go to personalize. Then we're going to just go all the way down to the bottom of the page and click on display settings. I'm going to go ahead and close this window because we don't need it anymore, but we are going to raise the resolution. As you can see here, we're running 800 by 600 pixels, so we're just going to go all the way up to 1080p. Although you can go up to uh, 4K, 2160 by um, 3840 or 3840 by 2160, which is for full 4K. I'm not going to do that because my screen isn't 4K but we are going to stay at 1280 by 1080 and for colors of course it's always the highest at 32 bit so we're going to go ahead and click on apply and you're going to see here I don't know if it's going to revert back but you can see that there's a lot of uh, overscan here or underscan I forgot what it's called so in order to fix that we're just going to go into view auto size and auto fit to guest and as you can see there it fixed it and we can actually uh, it, it reverts back to its own it reverted back to its original settings but we're going to go ahead and jump back to 1080 and you're going to see that it's going to fill the display I should have clicked OK instead of uh, instead of uh, apply, but you can see here everything is back to normal with full screen. And now we're going to activate Windows Vista, so we're going to go ahead and go into Start and right click on Computer, just jump into Properties, and we're going to go ahead and make this bigger. But you can see here you have 30 days to activate Windows. You can either activate it now or just wait those 30 days. That's the trial period, and you can click on Activate Windows Now. And there's no product key there, and I'm not going to put in a product key there, so I'm not going to bother with that, but this is where you activate it. And to update, we're actually going to close this. We're just going to jump into the little flag again, control panel, and security. You could also click on the check for updates that it had there, but Windows Update is right here. I always like to put it on my desktop because I'm always updating my computer and checking for updates, but you would just click here and turn on automatic updates. It's going to ask you for permission to use your computer. You click yes, and it starts checking for updates. And I know there are updates, and it is supported. Uh, updates are still supported for this operating system still, so that's good. And I believe Internet Explorer would still work, because I think it's Internet Explorer 8. I don't remember what version this is, but you can see here it's not using the Windows arrow. So we're going to go ahead and put that in there right now. So we go to Personalize, Windows Color and Appearance, Windows Arrow, and Windows Vista does look strikingly similar to Windows 7. I know Windows 7 is an improvement over Windows Vista, but still there's some people that may want to use Windows Vista, which is why I did this. Uh, this here is still um, Internet Explorer. It's still supported and you can download any other browser you may like. You don't have to stick to Internet Explorer, but at least you can use Internet Explorer to download other browsers. And you can see here to check for updates, you must first install an update for Windows Update. So you can always click on install now and it's going to ask you for permission to use your computer. You click yes and it starts downloading and installing the updates. And that's it for today on how to install Windows Vista in VMware Workstation. If you have any questions, leave them down below in the description. I'll try to answer them as best I can. And again, thanks for watching. See you all in the next video.